So ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor and pleasure to present an image of the Richard and Helen DeVos Japanese Garden at Frederick Meyer Gardens in Sculpture Park. Thank you. Some words that describe a Japanese garden are tranquility, simplicity, beauty, harmony, healing, and spirituality. A Japanese garden is made up of many different elements. Each element has its own significance and importance. For example, the gate at a Japanese garden is an important place to see the initial beauty of the garden, but also to cleanse yourself physically and mentally before you enter the garden. Once you are in a Japanese garden, <clears throat> those certain elements will come together um, and, and other of those elements are, are things like a moss garden, a bonsai garden, scenic bridges, waterfalls, pathways, tea house, a Zen style garden, faith reflective areas, boulders and stones. But just having each of these elements is not enough. What will give you a truly fine Japanese garden, in fact a great Japanese garden, is how these elements all come together to give you something truly extraordinary. So when you walk into a Japanese garden, you will feel the meaning of these words right down to your core. Tranquility, simplicity, beautiful, harmony, spirituality. And how can that happen? Well, it is because we have a very talented and skilled artist to make everything just right. To do that for us is Hoichi Kurisu president of Carissu International. And his life story is quite remarkable. Hoichi was born in Hiroshima in the late 1930s. He survived the atomic bomb blast. And through that tragic, tragic event, he witnessed the role of nature and horticulture uh, plays in healing people. He later spent some time in California Following that, he returned to Japan and, and went to Tokyo for his formal tra training in um, uh, landscape and uh, architecture and, and construction. Then he emigrated to the United States, and in 1972, he founded Carissu International in Portland, Oregon. He has been a very successful landscape uh, designer and architect. He's created three large public gardens here in the United States and hundreds, maybe thousands, of private gardens for people. After a very, very rigorous selection process, we selected Hoichi Kurusu and his company to create the Richard and Helen DeVos Japanese Garden at Frederick Meyer Gardens in Sculpture Park. Hoichi couldn't be here today. He is actually in Japan uh, working on our new garden, uh, the planning of our new garden. So here is Hoichi. This character is in Japanese term is showing the heart and that's the, the not the physical heart okay the most emotion is a feeling the heart is a along the Japanese history the many many Japanese architect used this word as a shape of the water or pond the shape. Because of this, if you use this shape, is every turn you go around the garden, you enjoy your different view. And that's the one of the merit, but it's uh, also the meaning to it. Japanese, his, Japanese garden's history go back as far as we have a record is the eighth century, which you call Heian period, but much more Nara period is could be is a nice garden with more, no record. But eighth century we have a record in the poem and the novel. Not the actual garden is not exist, but it's uh, since then Japanese garden has been developed, evolved many, many different forms. But principle 
of Japanese garden is the same. Principle is somehow Japanese people be with nature. Nature and us is one. So the garden is bring the ourselves to very close to be oneness. That's the principle. That's the dear mind, our mind. So this principle is uh, not only beautiful Japanese garden, or different, or peaceful, yes. The principle, if you realize, you drop off your ego, pride, angry or agony, and the gradually bring you to yourself to be real yourself. That's the Japanese garden does that. So I hope that gives you a little feel of Hoichi's uh, passion and knowledge uh, about what he does. It's really quite amazing. So two questions that you may have are, why are you doing this? And how is this possible? First to the why. Going back 10 years, uh, the idea for an international garden uh, out in the park uh, was included in our master plan. We've done a really great job over the last uh, 16 years fulfilling our, our master plans and, and, the, and the one that was done 10 years ago. And this is a, a ma the last major part of that. It was also Fred's last wish for Meyer Gardens. And really, it's a gift. Well, he wanted it to be a gift of sorts to Lena Meyer because Lena loves Japanese gardens. Maybe more importantly, she loves taking tea in a tea house in a Japanese garden. <laughs> and of course, as leaders, Fred and Lena made the first uh, and a major financial commitment to this project. We also have the incredible honor of Richard and Helen DeVos joining, for, joining us for this important project. Mr. and Mrs. DeVos are amazing leaders in our community. They built one of the uh, finest uh, international companies that has brought employment and prosperity to millions of people worldwide. Their role at Spectrum Hospital is absolutely fantastic. They have done so much to improve the quality and the access to health care for all of us. A similar thing can be said about Grand Valley State University. A very high quality education is so much more available to our community than it was 50 years ago. It's just amazing. One of my favorite things they do is they support all the cultural institutions. It's absolutely wonderful. I can't imagine there's any cultural institution in western Michigan that, that hasn't uh, prospered a lot more because of their generosity. And it's just another example how they've made our community better and in fact made each of our lives better for what they've done. It's, it's really amazing. And our budget. I don't put this up here to, to say, you know, it's going to be really expensive and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But I think the budget reflects um, our commitment to quality and the magnitude of this uh, eight and a half acre garden. It's really uh, quite important. Well, I have to tell you, as a uh, horticulturist at heart, this garden is very, very exciting for me. I wanted to come back to this slide uh, that David showed you a little bit earlier. And I want you to look at the amount of green uh, that's represented there. And that interaction between water and green space is truly going to be fantastic. I get a lot of questions already about a Jap what is a Japanese garden. And it may be easier for me to explain at this point what a Japanese garden is not. And a Japanese garden is not a collection of Japanese plants. I'll get the question sometimes, you know, do Japanese plants survive in West Michigan? And uh, 
this won't be a collection of Japanese plants, but rather a garden of tranquility, simplicity, and beauty that will utilize a wide range of plant material hardy to West Michigan. I think most of you are familiar with the art of bonsai. Um, and if I, if I use an, a quick analogy, when you first become familiar with bonsai, there's an assumption that a bonsai tree is a certain type of tree that it's only one type of tree that's manipulated into this form. And actually, as you learn more about that art form, you come to realize that bonsai is an art form. It's not a type of tree. So an oak can be a bonsai. A maple can be a bonsai. And if you carry that analogy over to a Japanese garden, this is an art form. It's not a collection of plants. So when you see a lot of these images that are in the back of the room here, uh, that, that Hoichi has provided us. You can see a lot of familiar things. You can see the texture of things that look like conifers, pines, for example. You can see seasonal color uh, from spring flowers, perhaps, or autumn color from maples and other trees that may be familiar to you. So this wide range of plant material will be utilized um, as we put together the horticulture of this Japanese garden. The garden will be created over the next three years, as David mentioned, and it will grow and evolve over decades and even centuries. If I show you a tree here, this is, this is a tree that's on the property um, in the Gwen Frostic Woodland Shade Garden. It's a sugar maple, and uh, I can tell you with a straight face that it's probably over 200 years old. So when we look at this brand new garden, um, it's important to remember that we are planting a foundation right now. Uh, this will be a beautiful garden, of course, when it opens, but it's a generational garden. And uh, generations from now, um, this same type of, of, of tree, the same concept of size and age will be appreciated you know, for an infinite amount of time to come. And it's safe to say that like all of the gardens here at Meyer Gardens, uh, this garden is a gift not only for just this generation, but for generations to come. And the garden will evolve and change as it ages, um, but those principles that Hoichi mentioned, uh, the, the principles that will be in place when this garden opens will remain, um, and those principles are the principles of tranquility, simplicity, and natural beauty. And finally, the, one of the most important and exciting pieces is the fact that Hoichi Caruso will be here in Grand Rapids uh, for most of the time that this garden is constructed. Um, he plans on living here for two years. And for me as a, as a director of horticulture, and for the horticulture staff, for the volunteers that will be working in this garden, this is an incredible opportunity for us to learn from Hoichi and work side by side with him. And uh, that's very, very exciting. Uh, we're gonna be able to learn from him uh, we're going to be able to, to glean a knowledge that um, we don't have here yet. So that's a very, very exciting piece of the horticulture part of this. I'd like to talk to you about sculpture, specifically for this uh, garden. And I'll start out with probably one of our most uh, iconic works, Rodin's Eve, which uh, graces the entrance to the gallery in the sculpture park. And you might be asking yourself, well, what does Rodin and uh, Eve specifically have to do with a Japanese garden? And the short answer is uh, not much. <laughs> Although Rodin had very definite interest in Japanese uh, culture. Um, but this goes back to what David introduced and what has become hallmark for us, not just uh, nationally but also internationally, is this relationship between sculpture and horticulture. And so when the opportunity uh, became very real for us to pursue uh, sculpture in this uh, area, we took it quite seriously and we began to think about how sculpture could be used effectively and poignantly uh, in this context. And we took an international approach and in doing so, looking and we're continuing to look across the globe for artists whose work in terms of style, in terms of material, in terms of message and uh, meaning is in sympathy with Hoichi's design and the larger ideas of Japanese garden. And uh, today we're ready to introduce uh, our first uh, major piece. And uh, this comes from the artist himself. It, Japan, is important to me. 
from poetry to the whole aesthetic world, it is very much a part of my language. And this was said by Anish Kapoor. And here's a picture of Anish, uh, born 1954 in India, lives and works in England, and uh, arguably one of the world's most important artists uh, today. And if the name doesn't ring a bell uh, for you, maybe some of the work uh, will. If you've been to Chicago and you've had the opportunity to uh, experience what the uh, Chicagoans call the bean, but he hates, uh, it's actually called Cloudgate. It's this uh, wonderful reflective high polished mirrored finish that uh, reflects you and reflects the environment and the city. And this idea of reflecting an environment and uh, involving and engaging the uh, viewer is very important to his work. And these high polished uh, mirrored, mirrored uh, uh, surfaces have become a significant part of his repertoire. But one of the things that we were anxious about was that if we presented something like this that was too similar to the Chicago piece, there would be this ongoing comparison to Chicago. And there turns out to be a very interesting and lesser known aspect of his repertoire, uh, works in stone, in particular works in granite, where he uh, utilizes the surfaces, he manipulates the surfaces uh, in degrees of finish and degrees of polish to reflect the uh, environment. And uh, this is one of those uh, rare works. And this piece uh, is now Meyer Gardens. Um, it's an untitled work. It's in black granite. It's uh, about 10 and a half feet in height. There are three large uh, discs. And if you look into these discs, you'll realize that the top one and the bottom one that goes into the ground are concave, and the central one is convex. And because of the degree of finish, the one at the top and the one at the bottom uh, invert the image. They sort of change reality. The one that is uh, convex in the center uh, mirrors or reflects reality. So this idea of uh, looking at and reflecting, this idea of utilizing material and trying to find a new essence in material is something that we all found very harmonious uh, with Hoichi's design and the history of Japanese gardens. Now there is a tradition for placing sculpture in a Japanese garden, but uh, as probably many of you have seen, it's highly ornamental. It's limited towards uh, lanterns, or lanterns or stone pagodas or things like that. But we had to make this Japanese garden our own, and this union of horticulture and sculpture, but also looking across the globe uh, for the finest artists that we could deal with became very significant. Um, one of the things that I always say, and my students are so tired of me saying, and I think the docents here at Maya Gardens too, is one of the great things about sculpture is that you walk around it. You have to experience it from all sides. It's different than a painting or a photograph or a print, which is primarily a frontal experience. This is something that you have to enjoy. And one of the things that I love about this piece in particular is the fact that as you go around it, uh, the sides change. It's really only the front, which has that high polish mirrored finish. On the sides, it's rougher and in the back it's rougher still. Um, this piece will be uh, probably in Grand Rapids in about two years. Right now it's a part of the American Ambassador's residence in London. It's on long-term loan from the artist even though it uh, does belong to Meyer Gardens. And I want to come back to where David began uh, talking about our mission. Uh, Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park promotes the enjoyment, understanding, and appreciation of gardens, sculpture, the natural environment of the arts. And hopefully, in what you've seen today, what you've experienced in these images around the room, you begin to understand a new and significant chapter of where we're going with the Richard and Helen DeVos Japanese Garden. On behalf of the entire Japanese community in Michigan, as well as the Midwest and the United States, I would like to extend our sincere appreciation and gratitude for including a revered aspect of the Japanese culture and aesthetic in the Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park. But uh, before I go too much further, let me take this opportunity to renew my gratitude to all of you and through you to the entire community in the Grand Rapids for great support and help which you gave to the victims in Japan after the <coughs> earthquake of Japan and tsunami uh, last March. And as a matter of fact, this earthquake and tsunami actually brought me to get introduced with this wonderful project. Back in last May, uh, I found out that uh, Meyer and 
Amway and some of the local companies, they are the first one to reach out to help Japanese victims. So I decided to come to, uh, personally come to express my gratitude. And I had a wonderful meeting with Hank Meyer. And in his conclusion, oh, by the way, Matt, my parents, Fred and Lena, they got a wonderful idea of building a Japanese garden. And by any chance, can you help me? And I said, of course. So this is the beginning of my journey together with all of you to create this really wonderful Japanese garden in the heart of the West Michigan. Now, <clears throat> I'll tell you, today's news will be well received with much enthusiasm and anticipation by many Japanese who live and work not only in Michigan, but Ohio and entire Midwest. By the way, there are more than 50,000 Japanese currently live and work in the Midwest, and they are your partners in manufacturing. And they always cherish something which connects them with Japan. So I hope that the Japan Garden in Grand Rapids going to be a must-see place for many Japanese and their children. And while they come to enjoy their wonderful winter days or autumn days, <laughs> they also have a chance to get acquainted with many local people like you or your sons, daughters, and grandchildren. So this is one of the many good things about uh, this. Richard and Helen DeVos Japanese Garden at Frederick Meyer <coughs> Gardens and Sculpture Park right here. Now, unlike my previous uh, speakers, as I told you, I'm not an expert by far on gardens, but still I do remember studying Japanese arts in high schools decades, decades ago. I don't tell you because I, I don't like to confine how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> now, still, four particular characteristics about Japanese garden stayed with me. First and foremost, simplicity. In other words, not ornate or complicated. And second, honesty. In other words, true to nature. Third, transition. In other words, ability of the garden to adapt as the seasons change from spring, summer, gorgeous autumn, followed by beautiful winter. And last but not least, eternity. Now, let's take a pause and think about those four characters. Don't you think those four characters can be applied to honest and hardworking people in West Michigan. Of course, including Fred Meyer, a simple, honest, and adaptable gentleman who, through his gifts and dedications, has left a legacy which I'm sure will live on forever. So today, the Meyers, the family of the Meyer and the divorce are giving us another such gift. So again, I wish to say to Lena and many friends here, and of course, all the people in this community, thank you very much for this wonderful generosity and this gift. And I'm so proud to be part of this wonderful project. Thank you very much. We'd, we'd like to open tomorrow. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're promising the, the initial construction will happen in the spring of 2013. Yeah. Um, the garden will take three years to uh, do the initial creation, and we'll have an opening uh, sometime in 2015. Our intent is to certainly have um, places around uh, the garden during its construction where you can see what is happening. Probably because of safety reasons, it'll be very difficult to get people actually in the construction site. 
uh, but our intent is that uh, you know you, you can see what's going on from the uh, perimeter of the garden. Once uh, the initial creation is done, you could go in this garden and easily spend an entire morning or an afternoon and not see everything that you want to see. Um, if you walk through just as fast as you possibly could and, and, and went around the perimeter and so forth, it'd probably still take you uh, 20 minutes to, to, to get through. Let me answer the second part first. Benchmarking um, with our designer, Hoichi, and having him been uh, so involved in, in three other uh, Japanese gardens, one in Portland, Anderson Japanese Gardens in uh, Rockford, Illinois, and the Murakami uh, Gardens down in Delray Beach, Florida. Um, cert we've looked at all those. Uh, many of us have visited all three of them, and they're, they're fantastic. They're beautiful. It reaffirmed our selection of Hoichi. Our goal with this is to create the finest Japanese garden. That's not to say that we're necessarily going to, well, we're, we're therefore we're, our goal is to be just better than everybody else. <clears throat> it's a, he, um, I wish Hoichi were here. He gave a great presentation. He said, well, you know, when you create the, the finest of this or that, you know, it's like, well, is, is the Mona Lisa the finest painting or is one of Van Gogh's the finest painting? They're both the finest in, in a true sense. And, um, you know, that's our goal. One of the things that we think will make us the finest and most unique, of course, is the way we uniquely combine horticulture and sculpture together. And, and we don't think those other institutions uh, will do that. But if you're in that, those parts of the country where those gardens are, I'd highly recommend you visit them. They're, they're really quite beautiful places. Yeah, that's a good question. Will we be creating jobs? Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, <clears throat> the, um, you know, it's, it's eight and a half acres, um, 25 to 3,500 tons of stones and boulders will be brought in. Um, it will create a lot of work for a lot of people. Um, and I have an answer to a question that you didn't ask, but it's kind of related to this, so I'll take the opportunity to, to, to answer it. Um, <clears throat> Hoichi is going to be here, he's going to live here for at least two years of the, of the three year initial creation. And one of the things that's really important for us to do is why he's here is to learn, to learn from him about how this garden is to be created and then how to care for it, you know, forever. And uh, one of the things that we'll do is early, very early in the process, uh, we will be hiring a horticulturist, at least one, uh, to uh, be the lead horticulturist for the Japanese garden. And uh, that person will, uh, you know, work side by side with Hoichi through the whole process and, and, you know, be highly skilled and highly educated at the end of that process. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, my dear friend Lena here, I think that's uh, the thing that she is most interested in, and we're, we're working very hard to uh, have that come online as, as soon as possible. Um, and uh, in fact, Hoichi, I mentioned, is in Japan right now. The two things that he's focusing on while he's over there working with a, another architect is the, uh, you know, the design of, of the uh, tea house and the main gate. It will be a working tea house. Um, uh, most likely by appointment uh, only. It'll be uh, north of the Children's Garden, west of the uh, Michigan Farm Garden. Yep. And the, the tram path right now goes all the way around it. So it's, it's really going to be bordered uh, almost entirely by the, the tram path. 